there, my fellow farmers. We are mere days away from the upcoming Stardew update and I am practically bursting with excitement. Let me know in the comments what you are most excited about. This hype train is still going. So let's take a final look at what we're expecting and hoping for in the coming days. Oh yeah, as I'm sure most of you fellow Stardew lovers already know, the 1.6 update is launching on the 19th of March. This initial release will be on PC only with a later launch on consoles and mobile. I have no words for how excited I am and I can't wait to play it alongside you guys on a 12 hour stream that I will be doing on the day of release. Throughout this video, I'll go over how I will look to approach this update with what we know at this final stage before release. So here's what to expect from the update. We even have a few conspiracy theories, my favorite, to get each other excited for this massive update. Concerned Ape has been spoiling us every day up until the day of the release with a non-spoilers patch note. If this piques your interest, head on over to Twitter and follow Mr. Ape himself for the latest announcements. We know that when a fruit tree is cut down, it will now drop a fruit tree sapling of similar quality as the fruits of that tree. So if you get a bronze quality fruit from the tree, it will drop the same quality tree sapling. The higher the quality of a sapling, the faster it will grow when replanted. How neat is this? Also, we know that the area of effect for downwards melee attacks will be fixed. This means you no longer have to constantly run underneath tough enemies. This is a very welcoming change indeed. We have spoken about this one before on my channel, so I'll say it one last time. We are getting three new festivals. We also know that all these festivals are just a distraction from the ongoing war against the Goro Empire. Wake up, sheeple! We almost got a little peek at a new festival in a screenshot. We all thought it would be a New Year's festival at first, but it has been confirmed that it is not. It is very possible that we can get a summer fireworks festival. Kent wouldn't be too happy about that, but just think about all the joy it could bring the valley. Besides this festival, we are getting two more. Whether or not any of these festivals will be a major festival, we don't know, but too many festivals will still be amazing, especially if they're anything like the beautiful winter night market. Many new items will also be added in this update. We got a sneak peek at a few. There's this cute little clover flower charm that I have no clue as to what its purpose could be. This totem could transport us to a brand new area. Maybe it could be the Joja headquarters? Then there's also this fish statue, some new kind of pink looking beverage that might be made with brand new ingredients. A quiver of arrows is also shown, so maybe all dreams and prayers to Yoba have finally been answered and we're getting better ranged combat in Staryu Valley. And lastly, there looks to be some kind of ticket that we could perhaps use to see a new movie or use to travel somewhere new on the train. Besides this little sneak peek, several other items are also going to be added like a little parsnip juice cool but also low-key ew next up is something we have been waiting for the longest time npcs are getting brand new winter outfits and we got a little preview of jazz in her cute little beanie and of course everyone's favorite bachelor sebastian with this trendy scarf look now everyone can experience the wonders of seasonal outfits without having to download PC mods. I am so happy my fellow console and Switch players can now see their favorite villagers button up their coats for the snowy season. And who knows, maybe outfits are being added for summer and fall as well. We'll just have to cross our fingers and toes for this one. Perhaps one of the most hyped new additions is the new farm type. People have speculated that we may get a swamp farm where you could hook a void fish in your own backyard. Others are saying a tougher farming experience is the way to go. They hope for a cave farm where bats would constantly 
they torment you and you could farm them for fruit. I personally would love a huge farm that is well suited for multiple farmers and even multiple farms to allow an amazing 8 player farming experience. Most likely, the 1.6 update will feature a farm type that is entirely different to these predictions and that none of us thought about. I am definitely gonna restart a new farm and have the time of my life growing those first parsnips and creating my parsnip juice empire. As we all know too well, once you go Joja, you never go Bakja. I know, I know, but with the 1.6 update, there will finally be extra endgame content for farmers that only care about the money. After you buy all the Jojo memberships from Mars, there isn't really all that much left to do in 1.5. We got a sneaky preview of this Jojo parrot on Ginger Island that seems to want to unlock a brand new area for us. This might be a legitimate reason to check out the Jojo route on your new playthrough if you've never done it before. Our beloved NPCs are also getting new lines of dialogue. I personally hope that Clint and Shane get some more character development because they really deserve it. Maybe we really can fix Shane this time? Giant crops are awesome. I went so long without even knowing they existed. So if you didn't know, giant crops have a 1% chance to spawn for every possible 3x3 plot in your fields of pumpkins, melons, or cauliflowers. Well, good news, fellow giant crop lovers. In this new update, we are getting a giant key fruit that will very likely work like all of the other ones. All we'll have to do is plant a bunch of key fruit and play the waiting game until the giant rears its head. Just look at this key fruit. Look at it. Now, the next one is not 100% confirmed, but Concerned Ape did tweet these two very words, which means makes me think we might be very lucky and get an iridium scythe added to our catalog of tools. Maybe it'll be able to help us harvest crops like the very popular mod with this incredible ability. And of course, it would probably be able to harvest more hay as well. I can't wait to get my hands on one. Besides all these major additions, let's go through a quick fire list of quality of life improvements coming to the valley. The farmhouse and pet bowl can now be moved like any other building from Robin's house. You can use the farm computer anywhere to see a summary of what is in that location instead of your farm. We can finally use the mini jukebox on Ginger Island now. You'll no longer be able to lose the golden scythe, infinity weapons, or tools when dying. I actually had no idea you could lose tools this way. The spreading weeds can no longer destroy artifact spots, which is wonderful news for us trophy hunters looking for snake vertebrae. You can no longer accidentally pick up your rugs if there is at least one piece of furniture on top of it, which is gonna be amazing to stop me raging at this game while trying to decorate. There are a bunch of other minor additions, so if you want to check them out, I'll leave the link to the wiki in the description below. There is plenty more content fixes and balance changes that will be added. So this was a general preview of the more major things coming next week Tuesday. Get your watering cans and hulls ready because this time next week, we will all be heading back to farm to our heart's content. Whether you'll be dusting off an old save file or starting over, I wish you all a happy farming season. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like and subscribe or else this chicken will be very upset indeed. Anyways, I will see you all in the next video.